Hello, good morning, and welcome to the next video tutorial in the series I've been doing on decentralized exchanges or DEXs, and specifically on the osmosis zone and superfluid staking. So in this video, what are you going to learn? Well, what I'm going to be covering here is the answer to the question I've received most often over the last two weeks, and that is, how is superfluid staking and me staking Osmo in the Osmosis Zone different from the staking that I would do in the Kepler Wallet app? And more importantly, when I stake in the Kepler Wallet app, does that give me superfluid staking as well, or does it have to be here in the Osmosis Zone? So I'm gonna give you a breakdown of all of the details there. I'm gonna go over the similarities and the differences and the things that you need to keep in mind when you're choosing whether to stake and provide liquidity in the osmosis zone for either pool number one, and again, I'm just talking about the superfluid staking pools, pool number one, pool number 560, which is our UST Osmo, 561, which is Luna Osmo, and again, pool number one is Adam Osmo, and that's been live for about two weeks, 560 and 561 are looking at about a week here coming up on Monday. So as always, please remember that all the information provided here is for entertainment, educational, and information or informational purposes only. I'm not an investment advisor, not investment advice. I'm not responsible for any fees or assets that you lose or fees that you incur. And keep that in mind. Make sure you do your own research, make good decisions, and always invest within your means. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in here. So the question I I've been receiving over the last week or two is, well, I've got some Osmo and I have it here in my Kepler wallet and I'm staking it. How is it that I'm not getting the superfluid staking rewards? Well, remember, this is what we're going to refer to as straight staking or simply taking an asset, in this case, the Osmo token, we're going to put it into the Kepler wallet here, and then we're simply gonna stake those Osmo, we're gonna earn 66.46%, and we're gonna get paid in Osmo. So what you would see is if I had some Osmo staked, it would show that here. Um, if you had any available, which means unstaked, it would show here, and it would also show if you had anything that needed to be claimed, any earnings that you could claim. And so then what could you do with those earnings? Well, I could then turn around and increase my stake in the Kepler wallet, or I could take them and go off and do something in the osmosis zone. But remember, straight staking in the Kepler wallet is currently at 66.46%. This is not super fluid staking. And by staking in the Kepler wallet app, you are not getting super fluid staking rates, which I'll touch on here in a second. So then the big question comes up, okay, well, why would I do straight staking in the Kepler wallet? That doesn't seem to make sense to me. I want to go ahead and get that super fluid staking rate. Well, remember, and let's now transition here over to the different pools. And you'll notice pool number one, and that's why it's got sort of that purple tinted outline around it. And the other pools don't here, except for 560 and 561. But in pool number one, we'll use as our example, if I click on pool number one, remember, this is where superfluid staking is taking place. And it's only taking place for the 14 day bonding period. You can't get the superfluid staking rate with seven days or a day. And the current superfluid staking rate is 54.65 plus 16%. So right around 70% it looks like, right? So we're right around 70%. So even at the superfluid staking rate, we're about 10 percentage points below what we used to be at in just the Kepler wallet. Now remember, when superfluid staking first kicked off in pool number one, probably about two and a half, three weeks ago, this was right around 80%. Again, this has come down about 14%. And remember, here you can simply take Osmo, stake Osmo, get paid in Osmo, straight staking, right? Very descriptive term. Here in pool number one, if you wanted to take advantage of the super fluid staking, you're gonna have to go ahead and match whatever the amount of Osmo is, because again, we're providing liquidity here. So we need the liquidity provider tokens. And what a liquidity provider token is, again, up here where you click on add, remove liquidity, is when you pick an even number dollar wise, not an even number of tokens. So it's not like, oh, I pick one atom, one Osmo. 
No, it's going to be equivalent in terms of the value, the dollar amount. So again, for an easy example, let's say that Adam is $30 a token and Osmo is $10 a token. I would need three Osmo to be uh, to equate to one atom, right? To be equal to one atom. So again, when I'm talking about 50-50 here and what you see, it's not talking about the number of tokens unless for whatever reason they were the same value, which would be great, uh, but they currently aren't. It's talking about the value of each of the 50-50 tokens or we're gonna put in here. So you would go ahead and you need to provide atom in an equal amount as the Osmo, or Osmo in the equal amount of the Atom. It's got to be 50-50 value-wise. So this is different from straight staking because it's not me just taking Osmo, staking Osmo, and getting paid in Osmo. Here, I'm going to match my Osmo, and I have to match the Osmo with Adam. Or, again, you could look at some of the other pools, 560-561 for the superfluid staking. But again, I have to match the Osmo with an equal dollar amount of Atom in order to create the liquidity provider token, which I can then stake and earn the super fluid staking rate on, which right now, as you can see here, is right around 70%. So this 50-50 down here that we put into this pool as LP liquidity provider tokens, we bond it for 14 days. We're earning about 70% and we're earning Osmo. Again, the major difference here really isn't the APR. The major difference is that I can't just throw Adam in here. I have to match it with an equivalent amount. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I said Adam. I, I can't just throw Osmo in here. I have to match it with an equivalent amount of Adam, and then I can get that rate. So, the, the, the answer to the question is to, well, you know, why would I do one and not the other? Well, maybe you don't want to put a bunch of money into Adam for whatever reason. Maybe you're fine just kind of taking your Osmo rewards out of the Kepler wallet and then restaking those in the Kepler wallet, earning very close to what superfluid staking is currently paying out here in this pool, uh, except, again, to participate in the superfluid staking in the pool, you're going to have to have an equal amount of atom. Again, dollar-wise equal amount. So that's the major difference. And that, again, this is one of the major questions I've been getting all week is, you know, why would I do this superfluid staking as opposed to just leaving it in the wallet? So let's build on that. So the, the APRs are just about the same. So that raises the question, well, why would I do anything here in this superfluid staking pool? Then that doesn't make any sense to me. Why not just do the Osmo and then not buy all that Atom or not have to buy all the Atom to participate here? Well, keep in mind, and you don't see it here right now, but this is superfluid staking enabled. And so the amount of Osmo that I have down here, right, that makes up this 50-50 pairing. And so again, let's say that I've got um, five atom, right? And it's a three to one right now. Let's just go ahead for the sake of argument. It's going to take three Osmo to give me one atom. So I, I would have in here 15 Osmo, right? So I would put in 15 Osmo, pair it with five atom. That's my liquidity provider tokens that I would get, right? That's that asset that I get that I can then stake and participate in superfluid staking with the 14 day bonding period. And you're gonna see, it's not here, but you would see right down here, there's gonna be this other box that's gonna show half of the Osmo. So in our case, it would be 7.5. So what happens with superfluid staking is half of this half, right? That 50%, half of that. So if I had 15, 7.5 of those are also earning an additional 70 percent, or I shouldn't say an additional 70 percent, but they are earning 70 percent APR. And so the way that it works is you're earning 70 percent APR on all eligible assets in the pool. And eligible assets are defined as the LP tokens and then half of the Osmo that makes up the LP token. So again, we put 15 in here initially to match with the five atom, and then half of those, 7.5, will be earning that 70%. So all of the eligible assets are earning 70% APR, right? And so that's something that's not going to happen 
if you're using straight staking out of the Kepler wallet and using the Kepler wallet app. Now, in addition to this, keep in mind that there's another similarity here. If you're staking in the Kepler wallet, and you see that you're earning 66.46%. Remember, when you go to stake in the Kepler wallet, it's gonna open up this tab for you where you're gonna to need to pick a validator. And the same thing happens. It doesn't bring you here, but it brings you to a list of validators where you need to pick a validator. And remember that there is a commission right, associated that those validators are charging for their service. And those commissions vary, as you can see here. And the commission rates that you see when you enable superfluid staking are the same as the rates that you're seeing here. Because in many cases, you're seeing the exact same validators, right, from which you can pick to stake those tokens. And so what's really happening is when you're doing that superfluid staking, and remember I said half of the Osmo you have, like 7.5, that is really sort of the equivalent, right? When What you're doing with those 7.5 Osmo is you're really staking them, but you're not earning the straight staking APR, you're earning the super fluid staking rate, right? And so again, it's very similar when you're doing the super fluid staking and you're getting that Osmo derivative, which is half of that half of Osmo that makes up the LP pair, half of that you can then turn around and stake, which is not something that you can do and that, that doesn't happen here with the Kepler wallet. Here again, you put Osmo in, you get Osmo out, you're getting 66.46% minus whatever the commission is that you're paying to the validator, and off you go. The superfluid staking allows you to leverage half of this Osmo here and then you can stake that and you're earning the superfluid staking rate. So again, the rates have come down, but remember you didn't have the option in any of the pools prior to superfluid staking to doing or to do something like this. All right, well, hopefully that's gonna clear up a lot of the questions I've been getting around superfluid staking. How is it different from the straight staking in the Kepler wallet? And why is it that I would want to do superfluid staking as opposed to doing straight staking? And again, it comes down to the use case that you feel most comfortable with, right? Or maybe you don't want to buy a whole bunch of Atom. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. As always, I really appreciate you guys stopping by and I appreciate your time. And I hope I have earned the privilege of your time throughout this video. And as always, have a great weekend and I hope to see you in the next video.